I'm a hair mineral analysis expert. I have a background in functional medicine and I educate people using HTMA testing to maximize health, erase debilitating symptoms and gain energy. I'm a multi-time kettlebell sport world champion and I'm constantly searching for high performance pros from all over the world to bring you this human optimization podcast. My name is Lisa Patel Killa. Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of the Human Optimization Podcast, and I'm so excited to have here with us today, Karen Jaworski. And Karen is in the health and fitness industry. She's been in it for over 22 years. I don't know how that's possible when you look like you're 22 years old. (laughs) How is that possible? This is why I showed up today, just to get the compliment. (laughs) Right? Uh, She's a registered holistic nutritionist culinary nutrition expert, a personal trainer, a yoga instructor, a fascial stretch therapist, and a Thai massage practitioner. She's the owner of Jaworski Wellness and the founder of the Chaos to Calm Method. I love that name. She has dedicated her life to helping busy and bloated women improve their broken digestion by embracing a healing whole foods lifestyle without the overwhelm so they can lose weight with ease. Welcome, Karen. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited. We have so many awesome topics. And I mean, women bloating digestion. I, I just, just like, doesn't everybody have, doesn't everybody deal with that? I feel like everybody deals with that, right? Well, my typical client is the overachiever. This is someone who is very accomplished. They are, they have a very full life. I hate the word busy to be honest, but they have a very full life packed schedules. They're running businesses. They have a household to run often have kids. Um, and there's someone who actually, who really cares about how they look. So they show up put together and um, they like to get their nails done. They like to get their hair done. They care about their physical appearance. And with that, they've also tried a bazillion different diets uh, along the course of their lifetime. Unknowingly, that's really messed up their digestion. Yeah. So they keep going back to things that they've done in their past. Um, I typically work with people anywhere between 37 and 57 in that bracket. And these are women who are still trying diet techniques that worked for them in their 20s and their 30s. And unfortunately, our bodies change. Actually, fortunately, I think that's actually a very (laughs) positive thing. But they're not making the connection. So they're trying things over and over again. And without understanding it, they're actually making their digestion worse. And they still want to lose weight, but they can't do that until they improve their digestion. So it's this cycle that they find themselves trapped in. So I come in and I help them break that cycle and create, help them connect the dots and awareness about this new body that they're in now, about this 40 plus year old body, how we have to treat it now because it is different. And in my opinion, it's better uh, Mm -hmm. and it's actually easier. Um, We have it kind of conditioned that you know, we have to go through these strong restrictions or kill ourselves at the gym. And it's just not that way. And when we do that, it actually makes it harder and harder for our bodies to adapt and let go of the extra weight. And we're actually messing up our hormones and our digestion more. So taking a kinder approach is sometimes the biggest battle that I have to overcome with some of these women because they are the type A's, they're the go-getters. They think if I'm going to work out, I'm going to work out hard. Um, And they kill themselves in the gym, not recognizing that that's layering extra stress on their body, which also impairs their digestive system. So it's it's a really amazing process to go through. Um, But we do hit some of those roadblocks. And half of them are those mental roadblocks. Um, And until we get through that and embracing a different way, because this is also decades of conditioning for restriction. Yeah, right. Um, And so undoing some of that, it takes some time, but it is so worth it. Well, and you know, I feel like it would be so because you're right, you know, and I went through that too, you know, probably 10 years ago when I was kind of in my mid thirties and it was like, oh, I can do this. I've done this a million times. And you go, you do, you automatically revert back to something that worked for you 10 or 15 or however many years ago. And all of a sudden this doesn't work. And you're like, wait a minute. What am I doing wrong? This this should be working, right? And uh, and those are really hard habits to break and to kind of make that new, you know, pave that new road um, to get where you want to go. Yeah. And and I imagine that uh, you know, and I want to come back to to that first step that you take. But I imagine that working with Type A's because I'm definitely a Type A personality can't be easy because it's hard for us sometimes to change our mentality because we're so headstrong. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know what? <laughs> it, it can be challenging for sure, yeah. um, but I can very much relate. You know, I come from uh, working in the corporate world for over 10 years. Um, I've managed teams, um, you know, worked in high pressure environments. So I understand that personality. I understand the high that you get from working in those types of environments. Yeah. Um, so relating it to them in a way that resonates, um, but applying it differently um, mm -hmm. is a really unique skill set that I think I have to be able to help make the impact. You yeah. know, and it certainly takes some time. There are some challenges, but when when I approach it that way, that's where I see the connection and the ability mm -hmm. to start to make a change. Amazing. And so, so what is that very first step? Is that the first step is making the connection or what's the first step for you when you get started in the process with somebody? The first step is managing their schedule. Mm. Um, because these are women who have very full schedules. Right. So if you want to make a change, you have to treat this like any other important business meeting. We have to book it in. Booking yeah. in time for movement, booking in time to learn about your body, booking in time to learn how to nourish this body um, and making the time to do so. So one of our initial steps is looking at your schedule. Okay, you want to do this? Show me where we're going to do this. Yeah. Without that step, I think it's a really, it's such a, it sounds like such a simple thing, but it's one of those things that a lot of people, oh, I'll do it later. You know, yep. oh, I'll, I'll get to that later. I'll have time um, for that next month happen. or yeah. Later yeah. never happens. Yeah. yeah. And then after we get that part done, I want to dig in deep to why they want to do this. Um, and this is a really important step in the entire process because it's not about weight. Um, mm -hmm. It's about how these women ultimately want to feel, yeah. the energy that they want to show up with in the world to be able to receive different energy back, how they feel in their clothes, um, how that translates over into their work, into their relationships, into their social interactions. That's what I want to focus on. Um, and helping to highlight the reasons why we're doing this. And then also understanding and talking about the reasons that held them back. So talking about mm, habits of self-sabotage. Yep. I dig in deep right at the very beginning. That's awesome. Um, because unless we address these things, mm -hmm. um, we can't get past them. And these are often habits that especially these women who carry themselves with a lot of pride because they are very accomplished. Mm -hmm. We all have those dirty little secrets of like the drawer of chocolate, for example. <laughs> Let's talk about that um, and put that on the table. Yeah. You know, yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's bring about, bring forward the things that have held you back, being really honest about it. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's tough, but it's so necessary because until we do that, we can't get past it. And those things will continue to come back and haunt them and hold them back. Yeah. So I want to address those right from the very beginning and then create our plan moving forward, understanding the things that have gotten in their way in the past. So we can strategize to get past them this time. Yeah and ultimately make the program work, right? I, and it's so interesting because, you know, being in, in health and wellness and being in that fitness field, a lot of people, I find, a lot of people, um, I think maybe unknowingly, they bypass that mental aspect of things. And, and you just stressed how important it is, and I always have believed how important this is, because, you know, even when you're coaching athletes, whether you're coaching athletes or whether you're changing somebody's lifestyle or whatever you're doing, um, if they don't have the right mindset and they don't believe, they won't achieve, you know, they just won't. That's, that's the difference between being on the podium and just competing. It's your mindset, right? And, and the fact that you address that right in the beginning is super powerful because I think a lot of people miss yeah. that. Yeah. And so yeah, it's really powerful. It is. It is. And I mean, how do you, how do you accomplish something without like, so one of the techniques that I always use, and again, we're getting down a little bit of a rabbit hole, but that's okay. I'll get us back on track in a minute <laughs> is visualization, right? Yeah. Just those visualization techniques. And I guess a, a little bit of old school thinking to some extent, because I've been doing this for decades now, just with regards to accomplishing certain goals and getting ready for a goal. It's like, and a lot of Olympians go through this too, is, um, you know, uh, looking at that goal in your mind, 
what could potentially stand in your way and how are you going to deal with it so that when the situation actually happens, you've been there so many times, you're ready for anything. And that's how you get through it. Yep. Success, right? And I think yep. that that has to be part of everything. Yeah. And yep. so... So my technique involves visualization, but we do it in, in terms of journaling. Um, I want them to get it. I want them to visualize it, but I also mm -hmm. want them to put it on paper. Yeah. And that makes it real. Um, yeah. And have that um, available to kind of tap into and remind you every step of the way. So for on the days that it does get challenging, mm -hmm. let's pull that letter out um, and let's remind you, A, why you're doing this um, and um, use that as a tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that way, it's not just a thought. Um, it's actual physical proof that you want this for yourself. Um, and, and you've I'm identified. Yeah. And you've identified why. You got to have a why. Otherwise, what are you doing it for? Right? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. So that's awesome. And so, so let's talk. So you talked about your, your typical client, which I mean, is so many women, right? Like the, I know so many women in the same boat. Um, and so what's, uh, we talked, you talked about bloating and how you work with that, but what are some of the most common issues with regards to c people kind of, you know, um, coming to you? What are, what are they dealing with? Well, mostly they're coming forward because they do have these, this bloating that is undiagnosed. They don't understand why mm -hmm. their doctor has maybe told them they have IBS, which is a very broad Common, yes. term. Yeah. Um, and mostly they want to lose weight and feel good, you know, but what they don't understand, they keep trying all these weight loss techniques. And as I mentioned before, this often, it, this is what really starts to mess up their digestive system, their hormones, um, their metabolic functions. And mm -hmm. so they keep trying these weight loss techniques and that is getting the bloating worse. So in turn, they, they want to lose weight, they want to lose bloating, and they're using all these methods that are actually making it worse or Band-Aid solutions, like things like Gas-X or yeah. um, antacids and stuff like that. And what they don't realize is that it's not just weight that they need to get rid of it's not a specific food oftentimes that is their problem mm -hmm. it's a matter of their gut health um, their gut flora their blood sugar imbalances the secretion of their hormones so they come to me because they want to lose weight and lose bloating and what they don't understand is what that root cause is right so i dive in and talk about the root cause of their blood sugars their gut flora, um, their uh, hormone secretions. And when we start to address those, then the bloating disappears. And then you start to create the opportunity for your body to lose weight. Yeah. Because what they don't understand is with the bloating and the digestive distress that they're experiencing, their body will not let go of weight. 100%. It has to yeah. go in that order, in my opinion. We mm -hmm. need to get our body functioning optimally to be able to create the opportunity to lose weight. Yeah. So all these weight loss techniques that they keep trying, it's never gonna work unless we address the digestion. Yeah, yeah, and you have to think too, is that when they're trying all those things, that's super stressful on the body. Oh my People goodness. People don't realize. Mm -hmm. right? Yes, so the adrenal glands are, have been taking a beating for years. Mm -hmm. The woman that I'm working with, they're that, it, typical type A stressed out um, woman um, who still gets a lot done. So they don't recognize <laughs> that their body is stressed. That's true. Right? I've been there yeah. too. <laughs> describe it to people is even though they can cross off all the things on their to-do list, even though they can manage a team, they can hit their goals, they're you know functioning in society, there's still a physiological response to stress that's happening internally in the body. Yeah. And the way I describe it to people is, you know when you're driving down the street and someone cuts you off, um, you swerve out of the way, but your heart is beating and you know you get the pit sweat, um, yes. <laughs> and you might say a few bad words, but you're safe, yeah. right? Yeah. You're completely safe. Um, but there is still that physiological response in your body mm -hmm. that's happening continuously when we're under pressure, when we're rushed, when we have full schedules yes. and hormonally, how that's affecting our body, our adrenal glands, our digestion, because digestion shuts down when our body is stressed. And this is where they're not making the connection because they're still accomplishing everything on their list. So right. they don't recognize that they're stressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really yeah. interesting. So and bring them back and create awareness to yeah. it first. Yeah. 
And, mm -hmm. and again, interesting and so important. And you're right. I, I think a lot of overachievers don't make that connection because they're so focused on their goals of whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish that it's irrelevant, right? So bringing that into the picture is, uh, yeah, so important. And so one of the things that you focus on is whole th just one part of the big parcel, right? Because there's a lot of things that you work on um, is whole foods, right? Changing lifestyle, working on whole foods. Let's talk about processed foods because I always find when people are busy, when people are stressed, what's the first thing we open? And I talk about this all the time in my group. The first thing we open is the pantry. It's not the fridge right? It's the pantry and the pantry is full of stuff in boxes and bags and, <laughs> and pre-portioned stuff. And it's all processed. Let's talk about that. Yep. So I refer to processed foods as non-foods. I genuinely actually don't even believe that they are food um, because they are just manufactured products that are edible. Um, just because you can eat it doesn't mean it's, you should. That's right. You know, yeah. um, the, the challenge with processed foods is they're in abundance everywhere. Um, it's become too convenient for us to eat really bad. Um, mm. And there's a lot of addictive qualities to processed foods. When we're looking at high uh, amounts of sugar, um, refined flour, a lot of chemicals and additives, binders, thickening agents, things I can't pronounce at all. Yeah. If I can't pronounce it, I don't want it in my body. I don't know what the heck that's going to do to me. Yeah. Um, and the other thing to recognize with processed foods, they don't offer our body nutrients. I base my entire practice about providing your body what it needs, and it needs an abundance of nutrients to be able to function optimally. When you're eating processed foods as the majority of your diet, or very frequently, you're taking in calories, but you're not taking in nutrients. Right. And the other thing to recognize is because you're taking in a product that doesn't offer your body nutrients, your body doesn't know what the heck to do with that. That's so right. it is leaching nutrients from other parts of your body to metabolize this and get this the heck out of your system. So it's a double whammy. You're yeah. not taking in nutrients and now you're leaching nutrients from your body. Let alone the effects that that's going to have on your hormones, on your blood sugar and distorting your gut flora. And those are the three things that I re mentioned really have a big impact on your digestive system and the bloating that a lot of people are experiencing. Mm -hmm. So they're taking in things that might have, you know, the heart health check mark or the blue label or the yes. low fat. Mm -hmm. And I don't fault people because it, the marketing industry has become brilliant about deceiving us to think yeah. that these foods are still good for us, even when they're fortified with nutrients. Yeah. But if it was fortified with nutrients, how nutrient deficient was it? to start with. Exactly. You know? 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it, I can't stress enough. And, and so I want to add, because of course, anyone who's watching, if you've saw, seen, if you've been on my website or, or been on my social media, you know, I'm all about mineral balance and that's going to be affected by all of that too. Right. A hundred percent. Because again, we talk about nutrient deficiencies and all these things. Remember, nutrient deficiencies can end up with heavy metal uh, toxicities, which advance aging, right? So it all goes hand in hand with, with what you're talking about. And so what types of, of nutritional changes? Because I find a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people get scared by the word whole foods. It's like, what's a whole food? I'm like, guys, it's not that, it's not hard, right? The whole food. So yep. what, what do you, how do you get people to embrace the whole food? And then what do you find the biggest bang for your buck when you're trying to kind of combat that bloating and, and get that gut health back in? What are some of the things that you use that you find really have worked well with regards to that lifestyle? Well, so first of all, I just kind of want to circle back if you don't mind. People become scared when we talk about whole foods. That is such an interesting thing when that is what our body is meant to be eating. But we've become yeah. so disconnected yeah. from food and what we're supposed to be eating that we have no idea what the heck to do with actual food. Yeah. We know what to do with a package, but we don't know what to do with an actual food. Mm -hmm. So a big part of my process is getting people in the kitchen again. Nice. Um, that has been a game changer 
And I genuinely feel that that is the only true way to manage and control your health. We can't leave it in the hands of a restaurant. We can't leave it in the hands of like the prepackaged meals that you get at Costco yeah. or the health smart check. We need to take personal responsibility for our choices and increase our skill level in the kitchen. Yeah. If you didn't learn it growing up, there's no better time to learn than now. Mm -hmm. And I make it extremely easy. Um, and that is a big part of my process because I work with really busy women. I recognize no one has three hours a night to spend in the kitchen making something right. fancy. Yeah. Um, everything that I give these women, 20 minutes. That's nothing awesome. More, yeah, Perfect. Nothing more than 20 minutes for beautiful whole foods meals full of flavor. Mm -hmm. And when you start to embrace this process, um, it literally changes your life. That being said, consistency is key. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the one thing that I find that most people are missing and the most challenging thing to stick with. I do take out gluten and dairy because I don't see any value in those in mm -hmm. um, a healing whole foods menu um, because I focus on foods that are always going to offer us benefit. I don't believe that those offer us any benefit. Um, but even at that, consistency is still key. So they might be eating really great uh, Monday through Friday. They're prepping their meal prepping. And I have an accountability system where every one of my clients has to turn into a food photographer. They've got to show me oh, pictures of it. what they're making. In their kitchen. Yeah. I, Cause I can't be there the whole right. time. So yeah. I have a whole crew of film photographer or food photographers. Now. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, but we need that consistency yeah. because you can't just be, you know, you can't just go off the rails on a weekend and expect your gut to heal. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. We have to get onto this process for a reasonable amount of time to allow your body to restore itself so that it can start to process things later. And most times we can have those things back into your diet on occasion, mm -hmm. but I want to help condition them that it's no longer a staple. We're no longer reaching for the cereal box or the crackers or the bread, and we're no longer relying on takeout all the time. Mm -hmm. It really is about changing your habits, taking personal responsibility for it, but I really make it so easy, and it's really important for my clients to make sure that this food is really loaded with flavor. Mm -hmm. Because most times when we go on restrictions, it's really bland, boring food. No yeah. one wants to eat a salad for the rest of their life. Right. Um, so that is a big part of my process, too, is to make sure that the food is enjoyable. Um, and when it's enjoyable and it's healing, that's what allows us to stick with it long term. Yeah. Makes total sense. Makes total sense. Because, again, you do you want to be able to sit down and enjoy a meal at the, you know, um, and I think that's really awesome. And, and I do think that a lot of, um, a lot of people have gotten into the habit of, of the takeout and things like that, where they're just replacing it. And you're right. You can only control what you're cooking. You don't know how much sodium's in something or what they've used, you know? So, so I mean, really, if you want to take control, you have to do it, uh, in your own home. And so, so what are the, some of the foods that you would recommend just with regards to gut health and kind of building that gut health? What are some of the things that fall into play um, that you like? Well, I definitely love um, adding in some probiotic benefits mm -hmm. um, into our body. Mm -hmm. I love fermented foods, um, kimchi, sauerkraut, miso is mm -hmm. really healing for the body. Yeah. And then we talk about things like when I go with the program that I've created for the women that I work with, each week I'm highlighting different foods. So oh. it's not just one thing. Yep. So what I want for people to understand, it's a combination mm -hmm. of different whole foods that are really gonna offer you the whole food, the benefits of mm -hmm. eating this way. Nice. So I may take a recipe and say there's eight ingredients. Um, I'm gonna break down for them exactly why I've chosen these ingredients, um, the healthful benefit, the vitamins, the minerals that they're gonna offer us and how that's going to translate into good gut health. So to say that I have, you know, one or two things, um, yeah. that's very limiting. It yeah. really is a combination of things. And I very much believe that we have to get into having a, a really broad range of variety in our diet, because that's where we're going to get the most abundance of nutrients. A lot of people eat the same thing over and over again, because yeah. they might've heard, you know, it's, it's good for you from Dr. Oz or something like that. Um, <laughs> and, so they yes. and then what happens? We end up with food intolerance. We develop 
Exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. variety is really important. Um, and then understanding the benefit of all of these foods. And so I teach this along the way. So they have a better understanding of the whys behind it. Mm, and so important, that educational piece, the, again, that why, why are we doing it? Why are we motivating? Why did I start this to begin with? Now the why of, of why we're doing certain things on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that's so important for success. Um, okay. And so I mean, you have so such a broad range of different certifications with regards to what you can offer. And so one of, let's talk about movement, because that obviously is a big part of the program, too. Right. Mm -hmm. And so so how I mean, how do you bring that into the program? What do you kind of focus on with um, clients with regards to just daily movement practice or, or however you approach it? Well, I always have to meet them where they're at. Number one, if I'm working with someone who you know, oftentimes it's, it is the high achiever where they are working out, you know, crazy intensity, six, seven days a week, an hour and a half wow. for them. Mm -hmm. I've got to bring them down a notch. Um, and then the other end of the spectrum where I'm working with women who aren't exercising at all, they haven't embraced that component into their life. So I've got to bring them up a notch, but we always meet in the middle. And I focus on a lot of restorative work um, mm. that's going to be really healthful for their body, improving circulations, undoing a lot of common restrictions. We're all at a desk for way too long. Um, yes. So some really common things about opening up the hips, opening up the chest and the shoulders, postural work, circulation, core work. That's mm. a big part of my focus. Um, and it takes the, the woman who's you know doing too much down a notch and the woman who's not doing enough up a notch and we we kind of hang out in this really restorative world for a little while doing movements that are energizing versus mm -hmm. depleting right. um, and just it doesn't what i want for people to understand especially within this bracket um, of these women that i'm working with is it doesn't have to be crazy intense yeah. but it has to be consistent and there's a big big difference between the two because mm -hmm. what i find is when people aim to do these crazy intense workouts it is either going to be really discouraging and they don't want to do it at all right. or they're overdoing it and they're la layering in more stress. Yeah. So finding that happy medium um, and focusing on consistency versus intensity um, and just undoing a lot of the most common restrictions um, and allowing you to feel energized. That's what's going to carry us forward versus a workout where you're so depleted that all you want to do is crash afterwards. That's not going to carry anyone forward. Well, and you know, I think because I've been there too years and years ago, um, just with regards to that last comment. And, and that's when I really knew uh, I was almost in a state of burnout was when I was, I've gone back to the gym and again, entrepreneur, I'd opened a new business at that point and it was super stressful. And I'm like, okay, hey, I need to get back to the gym. And of course I was one of those hit it hard, like let's do some high intensity stuff. And I remember leaving the gym and I was like, I was so exhausted. I'm like, there's something really wrong. And so it is people, you know, we have to understand that, that exercising is healthy, but it's stressful to the body. The adrenals take a hit when you're exercising. Like, so when, when somebody is, is overstressed and when, when you've got all the symptoms going on, um, and, and you're not achieving those things like the weight loss and you're, you're getting the bloating and things like that, then you know that, the adrenals are already taxed. So throwing in those high intensity workouts at this point in time, you're hundred percent right. It's not going to be uh, any um, benefit to the body at all. It's just going to cause more stress and, yeah. and make the situation worse. The other and thing that I really focus on with um, perspective of movement is mm -hmm. the intention behind the movement. So a lot of times people are exercising because they hate what they see in the mirror right. um, and they want to change it right? They're exercising because they can't stand themselves. Yeah. When we start to move in a way that's restorative and we're giving back to our body and moving in a, a more loving way to ourselves. And I know for myself, I have a, a very a strong athletic background. And when I went away to do my yoga teacher training, I actually did it only to create an opportunity to travel and teach. I wasn't a yogi. I wasn't yeah. even that flexible. I, I thought it was kind <laughs> of like hokey. Um, but I saw a cool opportunity. Yeah. And what I got out of it was so much more. I always refer to it as being a very soulful experience yeah. because for the first time in my life, and I had already been a trainer for, I don't know, about 15 years at this time. Um, for the first time in my entire life, I was moving in a way that I loved myself. 
And wow. that was a really pivotal moment. And when I started to move differently with that intention, my mm -hmm. body responded. So this is mm -hmm. some of the stuff that we get in layers of stuff that we get into yeah. um, with the woman that I work with and really starting to reshape the relationship with food and the relationship with themselves and learning how to treat themselves a different way as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's important. And that brings me to our next one, just with like the main lifestyle changes. So you've touched on a lot of that already, but just with regards to, to, to getting them to where they want to go, what are the, it's the you know, movement, food, we're talking about mindset, you know, what else kind of comes into play when you're, when you're on that journey um, to that end result? Patience. Um, and this is something that is hard to gain for a lot of these women because they have that perfectionist mentality, nice. right? And, you know, life isn't a straight line. Our bodies are very complex beings. Um, it may not go perfect immediately. You're not going to see results yesterday. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some effort. You are going to stumble and that's okay. It's part of the process. Um, but we have to learn from that. And so moving forward, allowing yourself some grace if it's not perfect and that's okay. Because if you truly want to make a lifestyle change, it's going to take time. Yeah. We're undoing habits and mindset conditioning that you've had for 20, 30, 40 years. You know, that takes time. It doesn't happen yeah. in a week. It's going to take some patience, um, but consistency trumps everything. Yeah. So even if you eat a chocolate bar one day, who mm -hmm. cares? Um, get, the, it'll, it'll, it'll be okay. <laughs> it'll be okay. You know, have some, you know, patience with yourself, give yourself some grace and some forgiveness, but move forward, get back on track the next day, the next meal even. Um, so as long as you're moving forward, everything will fall into place. And I find when you address it that way, that's when an actual lifestyle change happens versus being really strict for six weeks and, you know, dropping 10 pounds and then it and just rebounds back. hundred percent. Yeah. Cause it's not maintainable. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's the best strategy because again, if you're trying to make any type of change, I mean, you want it to be able to be maintained. You want it to be a learned or a relearned even action. Right. Um, and again, finding that motivation of why you're doing it, whether it's to be, you know, a whatever the case might be for each person, everybody's individual. And so, so, I mean, we've heard a lot about your program and so how does it all work? Like, how does it all go together when somebody that, how do they contact you? So walk us through the process. Um, because I think there's going to be a lot of people that are interested in, in reaching out. Um, well, I can be contacted through various different forms on uh, different social media platforms. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. I have a private Facebook group where I do a lot of, you know, coaching and um, free recipes and stuff like that. But for the program itself, it's broken down into 10 modules. And, you know, some women go through it in 10 weeks, very sequentially, um, and they have amazing success, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Other women, I had, there, it's a six month window that we're always looking at. Um, and I understand everybody's coming in at a slightly different place. You know, we, they may be very disconnected from food and their body, um, and they have a greater learning curve to go through. So it's a six month window that we work with and they work through those 10 modules in a six month time frame. In which case each module, I have broken everything down for them in a really clean, sequential, easy process where they're delivered full meal plans, all the recipes, grocery lists, video tutorials of me walking them through how to make the recipes to show them exactly how easy it is, especially if you haven't been in the kitchen for a while. Mm -hmm. um, it's very daunting to think about, oh my goodness, I have to cook all my meals, yeah. um, but it's actually really easy. So I show them firsthand how easy it is. Each week I provide them with a workout um, that is very restorative in nature, really highlighting in through some core strength, some of those common restrictions for women who sit behind a desk all day. Mm -hmm. And then we have a lesson plan each week where I talk about the effects of stress on the body. I talk about how your hormones are regulated through sleep and what that should look like. I talk about um, proper supplementation. Um, I talk about alcohol. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of these women like their one or two glasses of wine at night. Yeah. Let's talk about that. You know, yeah. what is the impact? Does it fit into a healthy life? How do we factor that in? So I want to help give them a clear understanding 
of how their body works according to the choices that they're making. Mm -hmm. um, so they become empowered through this process to learn how to take care of themselves better. And they're surrounded by oodles of support um, through this process. So they don't go at it alone, which I think is a really big factor um, to that helps with their success. Mm -hmm. um, they become part of a really supportive community of women who are all like them going through the same process together. We have very consistent communication through coaching calls and messaging so that at any point, if they have a question, they have an answer typically within half an hour. So oh, they are amazing. incredibly supported through this yeah. process mm -hmm. because I know for myself, um, the reason why I developed this program is because I was that person. Yeah. I was that person who was overstressed, overworked, my stomach a wreck. Um, I was doing all the things that I thought were right for weight loss and it was mm -hmm. getting worse. Mm -hmm. and I was going at it alone. I had no one to turn to to walk me through this. When I had a question, I worked in a gym. Um, I was asking all these muscle heads. They don't know my body. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, why didn't that work? They told me that it would work. <laughs> exactly. So I want to be that go-to person for them um, because I don't want another woman to have to go through what I went through. And now that I'm on the other side, it is so amazing to be able to be that resource for them, to walk them through the process step by step and really make it easy and attainable for them. Amazing. Well, I, that is excellent. And I'm so happy that you were able to come on today and share your program with us and with all of our listeners and viewers, because uh, I think it's pretty incredible. And so I'm hoping that uh, some people out there that are watching and listening that are those high achievers that might be stressed and maybe not feeling as well as they should are going to be taking a look a little bit deeper into, uh, into your program. So I can't thank you enough, Karen, for joining us today. And for all all of you listening on your favorite podcast host, make sure you give this episode a like. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my channel. We have a brand new podcast here every two weeks and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to today's show. Head over to lisapatelkila.com to gain access to some amazing free resources that will help you gain energy, erase debilitating symptoms, and be the best version of you. Remember to give this podcast a like and follow me on social media at Lisa Patel Killa. I'm here every two weeks with a brand new episode of the Human Optimization Podcast. Until next time.